Welcome back everyone. Uh, just a quick update video to let you know what I've been working on over the last week. Uh, there's been a fair bit going on as usual. Um, a lot of projects happening at the same time. Uh, these are the carbon fiber HHO plates that you've seen in previous experiments. Um, since the last time you've seen it I have cut them in half and based on the self-polarization process exhibited by these plates um, I decided to try and use them to replace a standard diode in a circuit. Uh, so I have so far successfully been able to remove diodes from things like bridge rectifiers and Cockroft Walton voltage multipliers and replace that diode directly with these plates in the water. Um, they must be in the water, otherwise the circuits do blow up. Um, but if they're in the water, I can replace the diode with these plates and the circuit continues to run. Um, at the same time, we're also producing HHO. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're at with these plates. Um, since the last time you've seen it, I've also come up with this new 1.1 millimeter thick carbon fiber sheet. Same material as the ones that you see in the jars there, uh, except this one is a lot thinner. 1.1 mil thick, as you can see, super smooth on the surface, um, and on the back. We, we tried to keep it so thin that the um, the matting is actually, you can see the weave on the matting poking through there. Um, but yeah, these are, this is a really good quality carbon fibre sheet, very smooth surface, for, so very good for um, fine spacings uh, with that smooth finish. I've actually got a whole sheet of this stuff and I won't be doing another one of these sheets because they're very tricky to make and it takes a long time but yeah you can see almost a high gloss finish on this sheet here on the front and on the back you can see the um, the texture of the matting showing through so it's really a single sided sort of sheet really um, so that's that that is the new conductive carbon fiber sheet at 1.1 mil thick what we have here is the main piece that was going to be used for the vacuum chamber manifold um, we're not going to be using this anymore because during a final design and weld prep meeting that I had with my welder uh, he expressed a bit of concern in regards to the 1.6 mil wall thickness of this tube um, he was a bit worried that it could deform with the heat that we're going to put into it so we decided that we're going to use a um, schedule 10 piece of pipe instead of this tube and we will machine it down to get that surface finished because you can't get um, polished scheduled pipe so um, yeah we'll get a heavier wall thickness less distortion in the pipe during welding and um, it'll be machined down to get to that same level of shine. So that's all happening. Bit of a setback, but it's in progress. So we'll use this pipe for something else one day. Here we have a couple of HHO cells. Um, the big one at the back there is nearly ready. It's still at the trial assembly stage. Um, as you can see, brass fittings, brass filler cap, um, brass gas extraction port and some food and fuel grade hose. Um, I'll be replacing those nuts that you can see on the top there with brass nuts uh, but at the moment these will do for a trial assembly. Uh, not glued together yet, we'll be working on that later. That's a mini version that I'm working on. Uh, I'll be adding an extension piece onto that just to give it a few more inches in height. Um, same thing again, just a mini version. Now when we actually get to a point where we're producing a decent amount of HHO I would like to actually do a bit of work with the gas instead of just lighting a flame. So I found this little two stroke whippersnipper engine on the side of the road and um, taking it to my mate Mick he's confirmed that it is in A1 condition. So I'm going to be putting this back together 
and then we're going to mount it into this frame. Uh, it's a 40 by 40 mild steel black powder coated freestanding frame. Uh, we'll be mounting the engine on a panel which will be in the top half of the frame. The bottom half will house the uh, HHO and power supply rig. Uh, so next time you see the engine it should be mounted in this frame. What you're looking at here is my high voltage electro test assembly. Um, it's not quite finished yet but um, as you can see it's got a pivoting electrode arm here and if you come around to this side you'll be able to see on the inside of it um, you can see there's a spring there holding up a plate which is actually a carb piece of the 1.1mm uh, carbon fibre sheet um, I've riveted a electrical connection onto the surface and as you can see the electrode moves up and down and we can control the spark at pretty accurately um, yeah, not quite finished yet, a bit of work to be done and um, we'll bring this back out and do some tests on it later but it should be a pretty cool little unit to be able to do some tests with this is my new spark gap assembly um, it's made out of Lego again it's capable of handling anywhere up to about 8 to 10 kilovolts depending on the current uh, anything above that and the plastic clips that hold the electrodes in place will probably melt uh, distorting the spark gap um, the electrodes that you can see there are actually engineer scribe tips uh, they're tungsten carbide tipped uh, in a metal casing I've color coded this thing black and red for DC applications and a bit of white in the middle just to get a bit of contrast for adjusting the spark gap. Uh, if you come to the top you'll see that um, it's capable of handling four sets of gaps. Uh, we've got two sets here so there's one gap there, there's the other gap. We'll have another set here and another set there. Uh, we can hook these up in series and in parallel uh, we can also just run them individually uh, we can use it for safety spark gaps uh, so it's a pretty versatile little unit we'll be using it a lot so um, I do plan on stripping this down and putting it back together with epoxy between every joint that way um, it'll be one solid unit you can use whatever electrodes you want these ones here actually came out of one of these which is a fan from a microwave oven um, so I just simply punched the shaft out and um, stuck them in there they work great I, I do prefer using the, um, the engineer scribe tips because you can get a more accurate gap um, it's more finely tuned and you get less er erosion of the, um, the surface of the electrode Last but not least is my new modified Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier circuit. Um, I'll quickly show you the circuit and then we'll turn it on. Uh, starting from over here, we'll run it from a 1.3 amp hour 12 volt battery, drawing less than 390 milliamps of initial current. Uh, that will go straight into this inverter, uh, converting it into 240 volts. AC at 50 Hertz then into this transformer then flowing on into the multiplier circuitry um, it's just really three multipliers from three separate bug zappers um, we're going to head from this multiplier circuit into this multiplier circuit into this one um, I have made some modifications as you can see here I've taken these resistors and just chop them off so they're not connected anymore any of these um, I've ripped out the ballast and some other components here you can see resistors just poking up not in use uh, removed some parts over here 
And the other thing that we've done is wired up, wired up the outputs um, slightly differently as well. One of the outputs is actually here, which is the high voltage negative um, on the last stage of the circuit. The high voltage positive, as you can see, is not connected. Um, we're taking our positive voltage straight from this um, the first multiplier circuit here and then we've just added a bit of capacitance uh, 2 kilovolt cap uh, across the new output terminals and then we're just leading straight out to this um, if we can get some zoom to this neon bulb here um, so let's turn it on and see what happens Alright, LED is on, we have power. We'll turn on the inverter. As you can see, it's on, it's working. I've got the multimeter set up here. And get some zoom again. That's our frequency pulsing out. We can change that frequency by modifying that cap that we've got on the, um, the output leads. But that's it. It runs. It runs very stable. It's a good little circuit and um, I'm thinking of mounting it on a piece of polycarb and then actually installing that in my 19 inch rack mount as a um, permanent power supply. So there you go. You might have noticed I've got some new carpet on the bench. Now, on my bench, because I know you all care, I've got a bit of 18mm marine ply, 3mm aluminium, then I've got the carpet, nice and soft. Keeps it from getting um, too dusty. So I'll just have to glue that down with some contact adhesive now. and um, It's my new bench surface. Anyway, we'll be... Um, doing more with this power supply and we'll be doing some more experiments soon but as you can see a lot of stuff going on thanks for watching